everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over what you need to know about photosynthesis for AP Biology by drawing my notes. Feel free to draw along, or also I'll post the final version of this drawn page in the description of this video if you'd like to use that instead. I apologize in advance for my messy handwriting, but let's get started. Today we're focusing on photosynthesis in eukaryotic organisms. Remember, photosynthesis is a series of coordinated reaction pathways that capture free energy from the sun to yield ADP and NADPH, which are going to power the production of organic molecules, especially glucose. Let's start with the sun, because the sun is the ultimate source of energy for all life on Earth. Now, the location of photosynthesis is inside the chloroplast, and there are several specific structures within the chloroplast that we're going to highlight today. So let's start by drawing our chloroplast, which is a membrane-bound organelle. Within our chloroplast, we have this area called the stroma, and this is where the dark reactions or light independent reactions are going to take place. We also have the thylakoid. Which you might see drawn as stacks like this. These also have a membrane. Now our light dependent reactions are going to happen within the thylakoid. Our dark or our carbon fixation reactions are going to happen within the stroma. Now during the light dependent reactions, light, which travels as photons, is going to be absorbed in the chlorophyll. Now the chlorophyll are going to absorb the free energy from the light, which will later boost the electrons to higher levels in photosystems 2 and photosystems 1. Photosystems 1 and 2 are protein complexes that are embedded in the internal membranes of our thylakoids. These will form an electron transport chain with the transfer of electrons. When light gets to the chlorophyll in photosystem two, it boosts electrons to higher levels. These electrons will then leave photosystem two and travel down the electron transport chain. Water comes in here. Water will be split to release electrons. This will then produce hydrogen ions as well as oxygen. It's important to note that oxygen is formed during the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. As electrons are transferred between the molecules in the sequence of reactions in the electron transport chain, we get a gradient of hydrogen ions across the thylakoid membrane. After photosystem 1, we also have the production of ATP via ATP synthase. This will be used in the Calvin cycle, or the carbon fixation reactions. NADPH, an electron carrier, is also formed in this process. This will also be used when we get to the dark reactions. Keep in mind that photosystem 2 comes first, then photosystem 1. It seems out of order, but photosystem 1 was discovered first. Now let's move on to the dark or carbon fixation reactions. Remember, the energy captured in the light reaction is going to be transferred to ATP and NADPH, which will power the production of carbohydrates in the Calvin cycle. Now, there's a lot of steps and different enzymes involved in the Calvin cycle. You might have heard of one, Rubisco, before. 
You don't need to know the names of all of these steps or of all of these enzymes for AP Biology. It is important to know that here is where carbon dioxide comes into play. Carbon dioxide goes into the Calvin cycle along with ATP and NADPH. Using the carbon from carbon dioxide, sugars or organic molecules are formed. And remember, all of this is occurring in the stroma of the chloroplast, not in the thylakoid. Now, if you've already studied cellular respiration, you might remember that NADH is a coenzyme produced in that process. It looks very similar to NADPH. An easy way to remember which one is produced in which process is that NADPH has a P, just like photosynthesis has a P. NADH is just the one that is used in cellular respiration. Let's look at our process again. Light energy is captured in the chlorophyll, which is going to boost electrons to higher levels in photosystems 2 and photosystem 1. These will travel down the electron transport chain, establishing a proton gradient, which will power the production of ATP via ATP synthase. NADPH, an electron carrier, also is produced and goes into our dark reactions, or the Calvin cycle. In our Calvin cycle or carbon fixation reactions, we have carbon dioxide as an input. We use NADPH and ATP generated in the light reactions to produce our organic molecules. So how did all of this begin? Photosynthesis first evolved in prokaryotic organisms. After lots of cyanobacteria started producing oxygen in photosynthesis, we had an oxygen boom on planet Earth. Eventually, we established an oxygenated atmosphere because of this. Our prokaryotic photosynthetic pathways were the foundation of eukaryotic photosynthesis. Through endosymbiosis, eventually, our prokaryotic symbiont lost a lot of genes and became the chloroplast, as we know it today. Again, this is just the basics of photosynthesis, but hopefully it was helpful in organizing all of the different steps into a visual format. I'll post a copy of this drawing in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.